Hi everybody, Grax Domain here, and this is a very special occasion, at least for me, because I have now done a little bit of testing, and I am testing this out now live, at an, at an hour that I hope people will be watching. I am testing out some live streaming in HD quality on YouTube, and I am doing this using a, a setup of a high definition camcorder, and using a capture card, a well-branded, well-known capture card, which I'll show you in a second. And I'm quite pleased with how this has all turned out so far, because this is actually a very high quality image. I mean, look how detailed, look how detailed this thing actually gets. Let me actually go, hang on, I'm just going to zoom in with a camcorder now. Zoom back and zoom forward and that is a lot of detail. Helps if I was speaking into the microphone. That is a lot of detail. Uh, you can see. Hang on, back up a little bit. Back it up, back it up. Come on, zoom in. Zoom in. You know you want to. Oh, maybe I broke it a little bit. Of course I'd break it. Of course I'd break it. Alright, let's back it up. Let's back. Oh, nope. Oh, 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 oh. Hello. Oh. Okay, so. You can get quite detailed. You can even see my th current third eye in quite a bit of detail. You can also see my eyeball and the individual hair follicles on my body. So that's pretty good. I'm pretty pleased with that. Again, I need to work out my setup, my arrangements with all this. Ah, uh, hello. Hi, how are you doing? Okay, so, I think this is all going well, and now I will explain to you what I am currently using for my setup. So this is my HD camcorder, and what I'm using is... What I'm using is a Panasonic HC V250. It's one of these bad boys right here. And... This allows you to record in high definition at 1080p at 50 frames per second maximum. What I'm streaming right now is 720p at 50 frames per second, and I'll explain why in a second. But this produces some pretty good results in terms of quality, and provided you have a good light source, you can get some very clear pictures. Um, it ends up being a bit of a flaw when the light is not so good, as I will demonstrate right now. So now I have turned off my studio lights and what we currently have above me is a ceiling lamp. A ceiling lamp, ceiling, ceiling lights. And it's the camera recorder is compensated for the lower lights, um, but it's still, it can be a bit grainy, which is not so great. Um, in terms of the microphone, I'm currently using this Samsung C01U condenser microphone. It's the microphone I've had for many, many years now, and it served me pretty well. What I'm going to do now There we go <clears throat> Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the camcorder and I'm going to show you the rest of my setup and I might grab the microphone here as well So, if you bear with me one second Uh, yeah, I've got this from the house also Okay, good. So, like I said, this is the camcorder, and this is the uh, TV, which I am having to be looking at right now. And there is absolutely no reason for this TV, except for my own personal amusement. See, look at that. Whoa, whoa. Uh, whoa, that's so cool. It allows me to actually see uh, myself on a bigger screen. As for the capture card, I'm using a... Elgato HD 60 you know, capture card and what I've done is I've connected the camcorder directly into the Elgato and this is connected to my big TV for my personal use and this USB is connected to my laptop um, so this is the Elgato uh, capture software that I'm currently using and uh, this is the setup that I'm using right now um, right now, I'm, I'm recording and streaming at the same time. There are some of the numbers. 
And there's a couple of interesting things to note relating to the setup. Uh, one thing I had to do was I've muted this uh, live preview sound because if you unmute you, you get this weird things. You get a feedback, and you just get a feedback in the recording. So, so if you mute it, then the sound will be entirely focused on the microphone. And the microphone here is connected to my Samsung uh, condenser microphone, which is something I wanted to do. Uh, you have a selection of microphones which you can choose from depending on what's installed at the time. Uh, one thing that's worth noting about this is on my camcorder, I've had to reduce the microphone volume of the microphone on the camcorder all the way down to zero or as low as I possibly can because that microphone setting gets picked up in the game audio and you get duplicates of sound which is something you don't want. And I believe that is the entire setup that I've got going all right now. So let's put this back the way it was, let's zoom back out. Uh -huh. Okay. Like to me because it's all about me. It's all about me, and I'm just going to quickly check the. I'm just going to check the stream to make sure it's fine because right now I'm watching myself. I'm watching myself um, on my Samsung phone here, and this allows me to see myself, but also allows me to see the actual uh, chat as well. You know, if there was actually but anybody else watching me at the time. Um, the main advantage of this is this is a good high quality way, high definition way for me to and for other people to actually interact with the audience having to be watching at the same time. I did try and do a Google Hangouts with PDT and Andy from RG Productions. The trouble with that is even though the video was fine, there was no good way for us to interact with the audience. And we wanted people to ask us questions, which wasn't very good. I'm hoping that using this system is a good way of doing things. Oh, there's a little notifications there. Um, I got the main inspiration from this setup from Max Lee of Higher Android fame. And I've got to remember the camera lens is there, not there, there. Apologies. So yeah, I got the main inspiration from that, where he got a much, much higher definition camera connected to a capture card, a couple of capture card, and that allowed him to have some really good high quality streaming of his um, Android channel where he t shows off Android devices. Another thing is worth noting is I have a 50 megabyte, megabit, mega something uh, broadband connection, which allows me to stream in a high, high enough quality. So there's that. Um, one other thing that's worth noting is make sure that your capture device, in this case, uh, high definition camcorder, make sure it actually outputs out a stream as a video uh, in, high, in high definition. And I'll show you what I mean by this. If you bear with me one moment. Right. This is a Nikon D5300, and this is my main choice for the uh, videos that I produce for myself, produce for RG Productions, and so on and so forth. It's a really good high definition DSLR, and it allows you to record videos. And an interesting thing is, you can also plug in a external field monitor to this uh, DSLR and you can get a bigger screen for previewing it. For some reason when I output this DSLR to the Elgato capture card it doesn't stream the video it turns it into slideshow mode or play mode and I don't know why that is I might have the settings wrong but it doesn't really matter for this case because right now the camcorder is more than enough for my services um, I suppose I should pick the wrong camera. I probably should have gone for something like a Canon 550D, I think that is what it's called. But the Canon series, which I think 
is a camcorder series designed for video more than the Nikon. Don't get me wrong, this is good. I'm very happy with it. But if I wanted to stream in high definition quality, you can't do it with this. Uh, anybody on chat? No. So another interesting question which comes to my mind is the minimum specs for the Elgato. I did a little bit of research and I wanted to see what the minimum spec was to run an Elgato HD60 capture card. I don't think that my setup is very efficient. I don't think that running the game or the running a computer game and running the capture software this, on this machine at the same time is very efficient. So I wanted to see what the minimum specs would be. According to the Elgato website, elgato.com, the minimum specs for the HD 60 is Windows 7, second generation Intel Core, oh, cool, thank you very much PDT, uh, second generation Intel Core 5 CPU, 2 gigs or high, gigahertz or higher, a sound card for 4 gigs of RAM, built to USB 2. My question is, why does it need to be a Intel i5 chip? Because what I'm, I, I, have, I have an old PC desktop. A desktop PC. I mean, it's about six, seven years old, and it uses a um, an Intel Duo Core processor. I'm wondering if that is enough for my streaming needs. And the other thing is, you don't need to use the Elgato HD Capture software. It just comes along with it, and it's very, very simple to set up um, once you know what you're doing. Hmm. Okay, it's looking a bit jumpy on the Elgato. I wonder if it's uh, a problem here on the video. Uh, excuse me one moment. So let's just take a quick look. Push play. And I just want to check the sound. No, it seems to be fine. So where was I before I interrupted myself? Oh yes, you don't need the Elgato software. Apparently you can hook this up to the OBS capture software, which is free. And this is another way of capturing it. So I'm wondering, can I hook my Elgato capture card hardware to my old desktop PC, run it through OBS, and then that way I can run the laptop, my big meeting laptop, play a a high quality game in good high graphics and stream it to the box and record it and stream it through there. I wonder, I, I don't know how that's going to work, but this is an experiment for another time. Um, I'm just trying to figure out if I've covered all my bases for this particular experiment. And I think I have. I mean, I'm very, I apologize. I'm very, very sorry that I've got a ginormous zit right here on my forehead. In fact, let's just get another close-up. Let's get another close-up of my zit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is what happens, kids, when you eat junk food all of the time. Yeah. Actually, I wonder if my tonsils are okay. Yeah, that's... Yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah, my tonsils are fine, I think. I mean, I'm not coughing up any blood or uh, tonsil stones or anything. I think that's everything I needed to talk about. So thank you very much right now for watching this stream. Or if you happen to be watching on a catch-up service, thank you for watching it. And I hope that this video is very informative. I'm sorry it's a bit long. I do go on a little bit. But I hope you find some useful stuff. Um, oh, in terms of the pricing, I'll just quickly run down the prices. This Panasonic camcorder cost me £130 secondhand, I'm well, sorry, refurbished on eBay, so that's 130 The The Elgato capture card I bought secondhand on eBay for £85. Uh, that's a bit hard to... F you can buy those things brand new for £130, and that's it, but if you wanted to go cheaper, you, you might be wanting to be a bit patient. The price does fluctuate between £70 and £100, depending on what day of the year. And... Uh, let's see, is there anything else? Obviously, you need a big beefy mi machine to... or well, beefy enough machine to capture the uh, videos. So, all in all, assuming you've got the laptop and you assume you've got 
the machine power, it would it would cost you about two hundred pounds for a very basic high definition um, streaming service. And this this camcorders must be what uh, three two three years old. So you don't have to buy today's latest machine to get high definition quality. Excuse me, my nose is very itchy. Anyway, thank you for watching this, and I'm thank you for sticking with me all throughout this stream. And I hope that I've given you some ideas. Um, let's just check the stream to make sure it's fine. Is it fine? Let's just find out. Yep, seems to be okay. Let's stream forward a bit. Come on, just yeah. Okay, yeah, that's good. So, thank you very much for watching. My name is Grax, and you can follow me on Twitter at Grax Bishop. My website is graxdomain.co.uk. I also go do stuff on rgproductions.com, uh, ranging from podcasts to videos, and we'll be producing some new stuff. Myself, Andy, and Michael Bell will be producing new stuff for RG Productions in the very new future, so do stay tuned. But until then, my name is Grax, and I'll see you next time.